So let's go ahead and jump back to our resource pack directory and let's go ahead and take a look at the 11th step which is called test.php parsing data into an array. We're going to go ahead and copy this code and paste it over the code that's currently in the test.php file and we'll save it. So there's two things happening in the code here. In the top, what we're doing is taking the data from our text file and we're converting it into an array. This is called parsing out the data or creating a parser. A parser is simply something that takes data from one format and converts it into a format that's easier to use in our code. If we scroll down, this bottom part here should look familiar. This code simply takes our people array and renders it into an HTML table. Let's go ahead and scroll back up to the top and let's do a quick demonstration. I'm going to jump back to the browser and I'm going to refresh our test.php file. Now you've seen this output before, but the difference is, is that instead of this data coming from a multi-dimensional array, it's coming from our comma separated values text file. Okay, let's go ahead and jump back to the code and see how we're doing this. Our first step is going to be pulling the entire content of our data file into a string so that we can begin manipulating it. The way that we're doing that here is by using something called an output buffer. Now normally, when we print something to the screen, we see it in our browser. But when we output something in an output buffer, we can capture that data in a string and then use it later on. In order to create an output buffer, we start off with this function ob underscore start. So if after this point we do some print statements, we won't see those in the browser. Instead, they're going to be captured in our output buffer. Our next step is to grab the data inside of data.txt and we're using an include statement for this. Now our data.txt file isn't wrapped in PHP tags and so what we're doing here is simply pulling in that text. If we did this include outside of the object buffer, we would see that text displayed in the browser. You can test this out by commenting out all of these lines except the include line. Our next step is to take the data in our output buffer and put it into a variable so we can use it later on. And we do this by using the function ob underscore git underscore contents. This function will get everything that's in our output buffer at this point, which is all of the text that's in data.txt, and then we're assigning that value to a variable. Now this variable will be available to us outside of the output buffer as well. So when we run this next function, which ends our output buffer, we'll have this data variable to work with. Now this next function is output buffer end clean. What this function does is it ends the output buffer, so we can begin using PHP to print data to the screen, and it also erases the data in the buffer to free up some memory on our machine. So at this point, our output buffer is no more, but we still have our data variable that we can work with. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside of that. We're going to uncomment out this debugging line here. So what this line is going to do is use verdump, which we used before in order to look at the contents of a variable, and then we're running the function die, which will stop the execution of PHP at this point. Now this could be on two lines, where we do a verdump first, and then we do die, with no arguments being passed to it. But this is just a way to say the same thing on a single line instead. Let's go ahead and save this, and jump to the browser and refresh, and let's look at the source code. Okay. So we see that we have a variable here, it's a string, it has 80 characters, and the contents should look identical to what we have in our data.txt file. 